All right, I'm going to try and implement this same pseudocode method that we talked about last time. Um, my implementation, I'm, I'm going to try and make the simplest implementation I can rather than making it be kind of the best. So our first step is I want to get every third letter out of the cipher. So I'll say string group one is an empty string. OK, so if I was going to do this in uh, a way that uses modular design, I would have some kind of method called get group, where I give it the cipher text. And I tell it, like, starting at letter 0, give me every third letter as a string. Actually, that's not too complicated. Let's, let's do that. So I've already done that, as a matter of fact. And here it is. Um, and this is something that you implemented from homework a while ago. So here's the input string. Here's my starting index. Here's how many letters I skip. So this is my output string. I start at the starting index. I go until I hit the end of the string. And every time I skip by the skip amount. And then, oh, you don't know get char at. Excuse me. Um, so ignore that. Instead, we're going to get the substring beginning at i, ending at i plus 1. OK. And so now I'm adding into the group, and I return the group at the end. Whenever you do something like this, you should absolutely test as you go. So I just want to make sure that this is returned to the correct group for me. So let's run it and see what I get. Oh, uh, OK, sorry. It won't run if there's still compile time errors. This is supposed to return a string at the end, so I'm going to have it return the empty string. OK, and then that's a duplicate variable. OK, so this has given me SDCO. So let's see if that looks right. So S, and then I skip 3, and then D, and then I skip 3, and C, and then I skip 3, O. OK, so this looks like it's working for group 0. Um, to be clear, that's not a thorough test. If this was an industry thing you were writing, you would already have unit tests for the thing that you're writing so that you would be sure it always works. All right, so I've got group 1. So now I'm going to loop through all possible shift values. So for shift equals 0, shift is less than, I'm not sure, we'll think about it in a second, shift plus plus. All right, so I'm looping through all the shift values. And then I need to try and decode. So I'll say string decoded equals cipher dot rotation cipher decrypt. Um, and in this case, group one is my plain text, and shift is my shift amount. All right. So now I'm going to make a method called get bag for letters or like get bag for string decoded so this is just my helper method that's going to do these steps it's going to create a new bag and it's going to loop over all the letters in the string and add them all to the bag so let's make that method right down here do i have bag yeah i do okay <clears throat> so i'll say bag b equals new bag and then for int i equals 0, i less than decoded dot length, i plus plus. And now I'll say bag dot add. And I'm adding decoded dot substring starting at i, ending at i plus 1. So that's getting each letter out, putting it into bag. And then at the end, I just want to return the bag, and I'm done. So that should give me the bag for this string. Oh, I called my bag B. That was probably a bad choice. I should call it bag. All right. So now I've got the bag. Now, like I said, I'm going to try the simplest thing that might work. So, so most frequent letter, if it's English, I know the most frequent letter should be space. So I'm going to ask the bag, give me the most frequent letter. And we'll see if it ends up being space or not. So if most frequent letter equals space, I know this shift amount must be the right shift amount for uh, the letter for group one. 
So I guess that's going to tell me the first letter of my password. So up here, I'm going to make a password variable to remember what the password is. Um, and so I'll need to figure out what the right letter is that corresponds to this shift amount. So I'll say, so uh, string password letter equals, I don't have my alphabet here. Let's see. Nope. Uh, I'll expose the alphabet inside Cypher in just a second. So alphabet. So we'll have the alphabet dot substring starting at shift ending at shift plus one. Shift was the right shift amount that decoded this rotation cipher. And if you remember originally, that shift amount corresponds to the letter that encoded all of these letters here in group one. So if, if a shift amount of 10 decoded all these letters, that must mean that that's this first letter in the password. So I need to figure out what letter corresponds to that shift amount. So I ask my alphabet what letter in the alphabet corresponds to that shift amount because that's how the encoding happened in the first place. So you have to make your alphabet public, um, but that should work. And so then once you have your letter, you can say password equals password plus the new password letter. And so now I've added my first letter to the password. So this should also be cipher.alphabet.length. And so that's all now been successful for group one. So again, whenever you're, so I'm gonna copy and paste this for groups two and three. Um, whenever you find yourself copying and pasting, pretty much always there's gonna be a shorter way to do it using loops. Um, but right now I just wanna focus on getting this working and then you can come back as a second step and revise it. So here we've got now group two, where now I'm starting at index one and I'm skipping by threes. I still want to shift through all possible shift values, but now I'm using group two, and that's the one I'm trying to decrypt, and I get a new bag, and I ask it for the frequency, and so everything else is the same, so that's really it. So now group three, I'm gonna start at index two and skip by threes. I'm gonna use group three as the one I'm trying to decrypt, and so then at the very end of the day, I should have three different letters in my password, so if you want to, you could just return password at this point, or if you wanted to return the plain text, you could return cipher.visionaire decrypt, the cipher text that was the original input, but now I've figured out what the password is, and so you're gonna return it using the password. All right, so that's it. Um, come back in just a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my alphabet public and things, and then we'll see if it works. So here I am, I'm going to make this alphabet public, uh, which is safe because it's final, which means it can't be changed, it's a constant. So I feel safe about making this public without actually having getters and setters. Seems fine to me. Um, except it doesn't like alphabet, why doesn't it like alphabet? Oh, because it's all caps, because it's a constant, okay. So there's alphabet, alphabet, alphabet. Okay, so it's not working yet. Feels a little disappointing. So why is it not working? There's a couple of possibilities. One possibility is maybe I didn't actually implement my plan the way I thought I did, so there's a bug. Another possibility is, remember this plan only works if we assume that the original plain text is statistically similar to English, if space really is the most frequently occurring letter and so on. And not only should that be true, and it, it sort of looks by visual inspection as if that's true, but if you think about how we're actually attacking it, it's got to be true that space is the most frequently occurring character in every single subgroup, all the subgroups that we got out, and it's not obvious to me that that's true. So my guess is that maybe if this were a longer sample of plain text English, then it might actually work because then it would be more statistically representative of real English. So let's give that a try. Okay, here I am. So I've created another string literal where I've pasted in a good solid chunk of text from Alice in Wonderland. Here I use Visionaire Cipher Encrypt to encrypt it using the password key. 
and then I first display what is the cipher text, what's the output of that. Then we use the frequency attack that I just created on that cipher text. So notice nowhere in here did I actually give it the password. Then decoded is the output of that, and we print out decoded. So let's see if this one works. And it looks like here's the cipher text. And here's the plain text. So it looks like we really have successfully broken it. So I should be able to replace this with any three letter key and it should still work successfully. So there we go. This is totally different cipher text. You see it looks totally different, but it looks like it's still decrypted. Okay, so let's go back and talk about this for a second. So a couple of things. One is this could be improved by trying to not copy and paste for each group, but instead use a loop that keeps track of the group that we're on. Another possibility for improvement is um, we have this very simple approach where we're guessing the most frequent letter is space. If you wanted to replace this with a more sophisticated test that would look at several different letter frequencies and then come up with some number that measures how similar is this to English, then what you could do is you could apply the maximum pattern. You are looping through all the shift values, and for every shift value, there's some score that it gets for how similar to English is the output when you use that shift amount. And you want the shift amount that has the best score. So if the best score is the highest number, then it'll be easy to do that. Um, and then you can have more and more sophisticated scoring methods, um, and that should get you to better and better guesses for what the correct shift amount is. Okay, good luck.